This week marked the 50th anniversary of what became known as the Battle of Versailles, an event just outside of Paris that many say put American fashion on the map. The Franco-American matchup also put the focus on diversity, with models and designers of color bringing personality and a sense of liberation to the runway. We spoke to the woman who brought the battle back into public consciousness and to some of the change makers who were there. The 17th century palace of Versailles in Paris apparently has fallen victim to termites, worms, and leaks. And those who want to save it say $60 million is needed. So it made the night, CBS Evening News with Walter bank. Cronkite. A night of glitz and glamour to restore the chateau of the last true French monarch. The Grand Divertissement, as it was known in 1973, was this incredible fashion moment. Filmmaker Deborah Riley Draper paid homage to that moment in her 2012 documentary, Versailles 73, American Runway Revolution. The European designers really didn't give the Americans a second thought because they were like, oh, they'll come over, they'll show some jeans and a t-shirt and that'll be that. Organized by famed fashion publicist Eleanor Lambert and Versailles restorer Gerald Vanderkamp, it featured the top five French couturiers, Hubert de Givenchy, Yves Saint Laurent, Pierre Cardin, Marc Bohan for Christian Dior, and Emmanuel Angaro. The American underdogs, Bill Blass, Halston, Oscar de la Renta, the sole woman presenter, Anne Klein, and a fresh-faced newcomer by the name of Stephen Burroughs. I just love the red stitching. I did it on everything. It was the bloodline that ran through the clothes. It had a life of its own. And this is how many colors? One. We spoke at Burroughs' alma mater, the Five, Fashion six, Institute of Technology. Eight. eight. After graduating from there in 1966, he quickly soared on the fashion scene. His colors and famous lettuce him caught the eye of Henry Bindle owner Geraldine Stutz. She tried on one of my coats and she turned around and said, I'll give you a boutique on the third floor. When can you start? And that was a Thursday. And then next Monday, I was at Bendel's. At 29, Burroughs was the first African-American to win the Cody, fashion's most prestigious award of the day. He later became Versailles' youngest designer. And then they all came forward. And then when they reached the end of the stage, they all started posing. And that was my segment until Pat Cleveland came out at the end in the longest train. Pat Cleveland, Alva Chin, and Norma Jean Darden were three of the 10 black models selected to walk the stage that night. Had you all modeled with that many black models? No, never before. No. So you went from modeling to food to food. We met up at well, Norma Jean's restaurant, Miss Mamie's Spoonbread 2. How would you three describe what happened in 1973? I was with the Duchess of Windsor, yakety yakking with Liza and this one, the Rothschilds. We were in good company, you know, the creme de la creme. That hall of mirrors for me was so beautiful. Slowly walking the way it had been centuries before. I remember so clearly going to the dinner and the food was just amazing. So no surprise, <laughs> I'm in the food business. <laughs> Darden had been modeling since her days at Sarah Lawrence College. My college people nominated me to be a Mademoiselle Magazine as the Collegiate of the Year, and I went down to Conte Nast. When I got there, the woman said to me, why didn't you use the delivery <gasps> Oh. And I went, I'm sorry, I'm here to represent my college for your magazine. She said, oh, no, no, no. White women have a priority here. We don't use black models. Oh. Boom. And that was my impetus to break through. And breakthrough they did, imbuing runways and eventually the Versailles stage with personality and panache. We were just coming out as being powerful. We owned the movement, we owned the music, we owned the parade of life, you know, evolving in the 
time period that it was. This was the early 70s, when women's roles in society were changing. Ken Downing is chief creative officer at Excel Brands and creative director of Halston, the designer who dressed the American master of ceremonies, Liza Minnelli. How they walked, how they moved their arms, how they made the clothes come to life. We got a feel for why the Americans won the evening 50 years ago. Badu is wearing one of the early sequin dresses from that period and a lovely lemon yellow. Look at the iridescence in the sequins. It, it really has a lovely modernity to it. Designs reflecting a modern woman with music to match the freedom of the garments. The entire show at Versailles was all about the French spending two and a half hours with ballet dancers and orchestras and, and pumpkin carriages and, and rocket ships that were dropping out of the ceiling. In under 35 minutes, the Americans dropped the mic. The audience reaction? They were ecstatic and they ran up to their feet, stood up, threw up their programs, clapped, screamed, and this was a very laid back, jet set audience. The battle, they say, was transformational. I believe it changed fashion as we know it today, and the idea that it actually changed how models look, walked, and presented themselves. What America was able to do was to demonstrate that diversity and inclusion on the stage was the most powerful weapon they could have. You got it, you got it, you got it. And those who brought the clothes to life strode into a new era. American fashion went the other way, and it was finally realized that that was the moment, the seminal moment when it happened. When fashion went from made to order to... Ready to wear. Everybody mm -hmm. can afford ready to wear. Yes. Everybody can't afford couture. couture. Right. Part of its lasting impact. In the spirit of the Versailles fashion show, the next frontier in fashion is everywhere. There's not Paris the capital or New York the capital or Milan. It's looking at cities and communities and places across the globe and finding inspiration in the places that you may not even know the name of. And I had never heard of the show before. Yeah. I never realized the impact of it until, you know, I came across the Versailles 73, Deborah Riley Draper. She's a noted um, uh, documentarian. You know, that Walter Cronkite clip, you, you would think she would have found it in the CBS News archive. Someone had actually taped that and she paid so that wow. she could include that clip. Yeah. Because the significance of Walter Cronkite Giving a nod for the CBS Evening News really meant something. Wow, incredible story. And I love, love might be the wrong word, but the reaction of the other models in hearing a story of discrimination, that they couldn't, what do you mean that happened at Mademoiselle? It was really pretty incredible. Well, they were 10 years after Norma Jean. Yeah. So, so the kind of response that she received. So many layers. Was, was you know. I, I didn't find it so shocking, but apparently. Yeah, I didn't did. either, yeah. Really cool, really yeah. cool.